Hi, today I want to show you a puddle, literally. In the dry season, when water running off the easternmost ridge of the Andes starts to slow down to a trickle, some of the lowland streams actually come to a stop. Their river bits become dry cobble-filled trenches, and fish survive in the last remaining puddles of water, waiting for the rain to start and once again turn these streams into fast-flowing rivers. We made a video on the Rio Guayhar, which is not far from here, and we will eventually show this region when it is filled with water also. At the onset of the dry season, these shallow riverbeds are teeming with life. Schools of Paradoin orinocoensis and Paradoin apollinari feast on the algae-covered rocks. Smaller streams feeding into these rivers see their water recede even more, and oxygen levels drop with a slowing flow and increase in temperature. Fish that require high oxygen levels will migrate out with the receding water, die or get picked off by herons, kingfishers and other birds. The stream we will look at today is not far from the river, and it's normally winding its way through the pastures between the Piedmont of the Andes and the main river. This time of the year, all that remains of the stream are standing pools of water, but these puddles are still teeming with life and many fish await the onset of the rains in these last suitable habitats. The obvious survivors here are Corydoras melanotania. As air breathers, they need little oxygen and can survive these harsh conditions. So long as the temperature does not rise above the current 30 degrees Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit, the characins here also are likely to survive until the rain starts. Their breathing is normal and they are not gasping oxygen-rich water along the surface. There are schools of young Astyanax bimaculatus, Hemigramma species, Perulina lugubris and Steindachneria argentea. Cichlids are also among the survivors found here, and you have likely spotted young Equidens metae and the occasional Epistogramma macmasteri or Bujorkina mariae. The cichlids are adept at hiding in the leaf litter and are better suited to dodging predatory birds. Some predatory fish also remain here, such as young Crinicicla anthurus and Hoplias malabaricus, the largest fish in these puddles, eating their way through the remaining fish population. Apistogramma fans would like to know that not far south of here, along the mountains, is the range of Apistogramma alacrina, and to the east, in the lowland, is Apistogramma vieta. Check out the video in the description. This kind of shallow habitat is very much like an aquarium, and would likely be an ideal candidate to recreate. The round cobbles of the foothills of the Andes look identical to those found in the rivers of the northern hemisphere. Even the major rivers here, shallow, laden with silt from the rainy season, with broad riverbeds and fist-sized round rocks look like many rivers along the European Alps or Rocky Mountains. This habitat, during the dry season, even has the dimensions of an aquarium, and features the same tufts of black beard algae that grow in many of our aquariums. Finding the fish species in this video should also be relatively easy, as they are several commonly imported aquarium fish. The dark back wall of this scene is comprised of the steep wall of the trench you can see in the photo before this clip. It is held together by the dense roots of riparian vegetation and tall trees that shade this area. Underneath, the stream has carved out an overhang that goes back arm's length. I hope you enjoyed a look at this microhabitat. See you soon with some videos from Habitats in Asia.